Statements made by United Traders, UT, or its members are opinions and not investment advice. UT is not responsible for any investment decisions made using the information provided. Improvements are not guaranteed. This material does not take into account your particular investment objectives, financial situations, or needs, and is not intended as recommendations appropriate for you. You must make an independent decision regarding investments or strategies mentioned on UT. Um, but if your ultimate goal, like mine, if you're adding this into a portfolio, you're looking to swing it, you're setting zones based on a longer time frame because it's just too many parts to try to manage multiple tickers on shorter time frames. It takes forever. So um, let's do the volume profile. So I believe it's study. And John, and, just a quick yeah. question while you're doing that. Um, do you include the wicks when you're drawing your Fibonacci? Wicks, uh, the candlestick wicks? Yeah. I use equal volume. So if you're looking for like support and resistance zones or where those rectangles are, um, I don't use wicks, but let's call it, let's call it a wick because it's a, on an equal volume candle. If you guys are familiar with what it is, um, I can show it to you, but let me just do this real quick here. So the volume profile is right here and the, I, I hate the default, but I'm going to add it in anyway. Um, me too. Okay. And then I'm, I'm going to remove the RSI out of there. Yeah. So I, I, I absolutely hate the default, but. It is what it is. Um, if you look at the profile here, you know, where all that volume's at, you look where the 61.8 and 50's at, and, and what it did here. Remember how I talked about this not having any volume here on the monthly or on the weekly? You can see it. I mean, it's, it's very clear. You can look at the candle. It spent no time here. How could it have a lot of volume here? All right. You had two weeks, less than two weeks for it to, to stay inside this fan zone. So when it broke out and up, this is your current area of interest to buy. Let's call it support, which is the, the bottom of the profile until it's not, until it breaks down into this. And you have overlapping zones here on the Fibonacci fan and the arc, both. I would be strongly considering um, this particular stock to touch this area as a possibility in the near-term future. This is looking at April. All right. Or up here. I think we talked about this earlier. Right here. So what direction is it going to go in the future? I don't know. But I'm going to add, I'm going to chart this out as areas of interest. That's all. Um, so this is the volume profile. If you guys wanted to see what it looks like um, on the weekly, that's it. So does it matter? Yeah, of course it does. Um, and what you have here going on. It could be building a base, right? Just finding support and growing a profile until it doesn't. But I would anticipate AMD at some point filling this pocket. It's a target now. This whole area, there's no support below this line at 72.96. Once it breaks down here, who wants to buy it? These guys down here, they bought it before, anywhere in the $50 range. But I want to see it test the top of that profile first and see if we got buyers there before I make a decision. So that's just using Fibonacci's in conjunction with volume profile. Are there key areas? Look where the lines are. You tell me. 61.8. It gapped right over the top of that. Is that a key area? Yeah. So is this 161.8 probably valid if this is valid? Yes. Does it touch this, the... Um, the Fibonacci fan, it does. So there's a lot of things that are proving itself uh, with validity in terms of are Fibonacci's present, are they being utilized on this particular stock? Um, does that make sense? Yep. And uh, we have a question from up to me. Do you perform different time frame analysis to find time frames that adhere? the best when determining like a time frame to trade it on, I guess, in terms of like the Fibonacci levels. That question's for you. I think that's questions for you. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought the question was for you. All right. Can you repeat it again? Because <laughs> I didn't realize I was answering it. 
Oh, you know what? I'll just repeat the whole question. Um, when looking at a new ticker, do you perform mm-hmm. different time frame analysis to find time frames that he- adhere the best attempting to determine which time frame people y- people are trading yes. against you are using? There you yes, go. absolutely. Um, on a ticker like AMD, where there's going to be a lot of people who are bullish on it, uh, clearly, and have been, that it's a very popular stock that a lot of people are familiar with and a brand name that people understand. When you have stuff like this, like a Starbucks, you know, a household name, uh, Tesla, anything along those lines, I would start the longest data you can possibly get as far back as you can go and start your period lows to your period highs from there. Why? Because the people who started buying that stock way back then didn't just stop. Right? They've been bullish since day one on AMD. You can't tell me that the people who are buying AMD at $9 went, nah, I just I don't believe in AMD anymore. No, they're still hanging around trading this thing. Okay. At what period are they are they are they taking profit and buying back in is what you need to ask yourself. And that's kind of what you why you're starting at a, a longer time frame is to determine what are they going to do? Because they're not selling every single day. Okay, they're not selling every single little tiny pop in a five-minute candle. They're looking at AMD from the bigger picture, from here to here. What am I going to do? And especially if you're a big money or a market maker or you have AMD as part of an ETF, you, it's impossible for you to sell a million shares in a day and not f- just flush the price down, right? So you got to be real smart about how you do it and when over a period of time. Um that's why we're seeing what we see. That's why you see movement in the market and a lot of chops sometimes or a lot of indecision that's made because there's stuff going on at that period of time. Um, but you'll, you would know that in advance if you're doing uh, a series of Fibonacci's in conjunction with everything else that we're looking at. Here's a really good example is this little area right here before we had a really nice move. Okay, We built a strong volume profile. We had a, I drew this zone because this was the 78, I mean, uh, 61.8 on an extension. So we drew this and when it tested it and broke out and had that fan into consideration, we had a lot of stuff going for us. Okay. We had volume support based on the profile. We had the fan. We had broken above the prior resistance zone and we didn't have anywhere else to go except the next level on the fan. Right. We hadn't had this arc, all this, none of this happened yet. Okay. So how high could we go? It ran. I mean, it, it ran all the way up until 52.59. And at this time, there was no profile here. It was just starting to build. Okay. So it runs up, pulls back down to basically the value area. How would you have known that's where the bottom was going to be before it, it launched again? I think we already drew this um, out, but I can draw it again. If I had a Fibonacci extension, created low to a defined period high. And if I drew it again, right there, we have overlapping fibs yet again, okay? So 61.8, I'm taking profit. Well, guess what's going on here? The same exact thing. A lot of noise because there's a lot of profit taking movement right here in between this. And we saw this on the monthly time frame, this area. So I could, Take that same box, guys, activate drawing, and just make it bigger and encompass this entire area. And for me, I would make this, if I'm long, like I would make this a no trade zone where you have areas between I'm taking profit here and I'm taking profit here from two different time frames, all trying to decide. That's why you're seeing this. Okay. That's why you're seeing all this moving around going on this whole area. Over a period of weeks, it just sits flat. Comes down here and tests this zone a few times, et cetera. And then when it finally breaks above and out of the no trade zone, we're good. Okay. We can long. We can stay long. Can you take profit here? Yeah. Can you take profit here? Yeah. Profit to infinity. If you want to trail stop it, you could. But the point is, I could draw off of the fibs where, and this was from knowing the past, okay, but the past where we could potentially go in the future. Until we broke out of this 61.8, this wasn't a long. And if you want, if it's your goal to sit into a stock 
you know, for, uh, I don't know, four months until it breaks out. You're not a day trader. I can tell you that right now. <laughs> um, but if your position is to, is to long and just accumulate in the, because you're a, uh, a long-term uh, bullish on AMD, then you'd buy this also. Repeated times, you had this whole area tested you multiple times to buy in. And if you wanted to buy in later because you were late to the party, no one's going to be mad at you for breaking out. This is a breakout. This is, this is good to go. It's a breakout of resistance zone. It's a breakout of the FIB zone. And I would be long. Does that help? Yeah, definitely. And um, I have another question here from Financial Impact. When would you use a Fibonacci retracement versus a Fibonacci extension? Um, so a retracement, I would use it on a longer time frame, bigger pictures type stuff. Now, an extension is just a retracement, but it's drawn from a period low to a period high. It doesn't go high, low, high or high, uh, low, high, low, meaning we're not looking for a future projection. We're looking for it to come back only to where a place it's already been. If we did it on AMD, for example, and the reason why it would be very difficult to do it this way is because we would be have I would have a billion of them on this chart. Um, let me show you what I mean. So this is the traditional Fibonacci retracement. Okay. You draw it here to here. This is not the extension. So a period uh, low to a period high. And then you're going to get a period high to a period low. Oops. Okay. So if I'm short now, meaning it's already been here, I want to see where it can go the other direction, retracing. I'm going to estimate. In here, okay, that's the 61.8. It broke below and we hit that fan. Interesting. And the arc. This isn't necessarily a particular uh, retracement that I would leave on the chart because it doesn't, it's not trying to project everything else that the Fibonacci's are telling me from what we've already gone over. Does this help this make sense? Because if it breaks below the 61.8, all this is doing here is just taking out people's stop losses. Everyone's trying to buy the 61.8. Out, out, out. Everyone's out because they're not considering these other things here, the arc and the fan. This is all kind of co coinciding with one another plus an area of support. All right. So there's a lot of stuff going on in this area that, you know, if you're only using Fibonacci and you're strictly using tracement, you're, you're probably going to end up getting stopped out repeatedly. And we see the evidence of that. Out, you're out, you're out, you're out, you're out, you're out. And it's not until it finally breaks above where it was that we can be long. So we would take, remove the drawing, then the period low to the period high. And where we would go from there to, on a pullback is what I would want to know. Okay. Do we get a pullback? No, that's why the extensions are working in the side. This, this fan was key, okay? The fan was key as well as the area here of uh, support and off the other extension that we drew. The retracement is telling us we'd want to buy in here if it broke down below the 50 or touched the 50. It's, it's really not playing out. 